supposedly originating from the Baltic island of Bornholm. The Burgundians were an attested tribe by the 1st century AD. At the time, they were settled beyond the Oder River. In the 3rd century, attacked by the Gepids, they started migrating southwest. Contact with the Roman world was made before the end of this same century. In 278, as they invaded with Vandal allies, the Burgundians were defeated by imperial forces. A decade later, in a panegyric dedicated to Emperor Maximian, they were mentioned as a menace to Roman internal security. The tribe pushed ever westward, battling against the Alamanni. In 369, by now established on the Main Valley, a tributary of the Rhine, the Burgundians made a deal with the Empire to launch a combined attack against their enemy. However, the awaited Roman offensive never came. Discontented, the Burgundians executed their Alamanni prisoners and returned to their territory. The alliance was a failure. It appears that during the reign of King Gebeka or his successor Gundahar, the various clans of the tribe were unified under one ruling family. As the year 407 began, the Burgundians participated in the crossing of the Rhine with Alans, Vandals and Suebi. While most of the tribes would penetrate deep into Roman territory, the Burgundians did not venture far off. They occupied the western bank of the Rhine without leaving the Main Valley. To legitimize their presence in northern Gallia, King Goar of the Alans and King Gundahar of the Burgundians elevated a puppet emperor, Jovinus. With Burgundian, Alan, Frankish and Alamanni support, Jovinus and his brothers marched south. However, the loyalist forces defeated and killed the usurpers. Despite this challenge to his authority, Emperor Honorius recognized the Burgundians on the Rhine as a federated people. They were now required to protect the frontier. Until now practicing a Germanic polytheistic faith, the Burgundians embraced Christianity. At this point, it is unclear if they favored Arianism or the creed of Nicaea, while some remained pagan. From the east, Hanuk attacks started to be a problem. To protect his people, King Gundahar scored a clear victory against the invaders. Despite their contract with Rome, the Burgundians attacked Belgica, but were stopped by Roman general Flavius Aetius. The next year, the Huns invaded again with brutality. Much of the tribal elite was slain, Gundahar was killed, and his kingdom was destroyed. This event would reverberate on Germanic mythology and poetry in later centuries. The much weakened tribe of about 25 to 50,000 souls sought a new refuge. Under Roman supervision, the Burgundian people resettled in the region of Sapodia. Years later, once it was again able to provide an army, Aetius confirmed this grant of land. The Burgundians were, yet again, a federated ally of the Empire. Thus, when the vast army of Attila invaded Gallia, the Burgundians answered the call. Led by their two kings, Gondioc and Shelperic, they sought revenge from the great affliction suffered from the Huns 15 years ago. The two sides met at the Catalonian plains. In the Hunnic-led confederated army was also present a Burgundian contingent from the Rhine. Indeed, there were those who did not migrate into Sapodia after the destruction of the First Kingdom. The confrontation was fierce and, while it ended a strategic victory for the Roman coalition, the Burgundians were not spared by the heavy casualties of the battle. Later, in Ravenna, Aetius was murdered by Emperor Valentinian, who was subsequently killed by the former's bodyguards. 
with Attila also dead and the Honic threat dissipated, the dynamics in the Western Empire changed. In this context, King Gondiok married the sister of a rising Germanic Imperial strongman, Resemer. In Hispania, the aggressive Suebi were causing troubles. The Visigoths requested help from their Burgundian allies. Together with Theodoric II, they crushed Richaia on the Orbicos River. Back in Italia, the recently proclaimed Emperor Avitus, a Gallic noble supported by Theodoric, was defeated and exiled by Resamer and his ally Majorian. The latter became the new emperor. Dissatisfied, the Gallic nobility sought autonomy from the central government. The Burgundians negotiated with this aristocracy and eventually peacefully occupied several cities of the region. Magister Militum Aegidius intervened. Logdunum was besieged, after which the Romans reoccupied the city. The Burgundians were forgiven for their actions and re-entered imperial service. The Visigoths were repelled by Majorian's forces as well, re-establishing imperial dominance in Gallia. Majorian's death, however, put an end to this brief Roman resurgence. Gondioc set up his capital in Logdunum and further expanded the kingdom. In the year 463, a dispute occurred inside Roman clerical authorities. A successor to the bishopric of Dea was needed. This choice was supposed to be made by Leontius of Arelate. However, Mamatus of Vienna intervened directly to establish his candidate, a man named Marcel. The clerks of Arelate protested and Gondioc reported the situation to Pope Hilarius. The latter blamed Mamatus and stated that the influence of the bishopric of Vienna would be reduced, would he reiterate such an action. Still, Marcel was accepted by Leontius as bishop of Dea. While Gondioc was in Lugdunum, Schilperic ruled from Geneva, where he held public audiences. He once had to arbitrate a dispute in which a clergyman named Lupecinus incriminated a local noble for his actions. By about that time, Gondioc had died. Thus, Schilperic became the sole king and, like his brother, took the title of Magister Militum. Further territorial expansion took place. The Rhone Valley was conquered as far as the city of Avignon. Resemer, who controlled the imperial government since the death of Majorian, passed away. The young Gundobad, son of Gondioc and nephew of Resemer, had assisted the man in his endeavors. Now, he became the new Roman patrician and elevated Glycerius as his own puppet emperor. The new monarch was not recognized by the Eastern Romans who, instead, supported Julius Nepos. The latter arrived in Ravenna with an army, and Glycerius, abandoned by Gundubad, was forced to back down. He was exiled as Bishop of Salona. In the Burgundian kingdom, the four sons of Gondioc, Gundubad, Godegizel, Shelperic II, and Godomar, now shared power, while Shelperic I remained the official king. War raged in central Gallia as the Visigoths expanded at Rome's expense. Clashes occurred between the two bordering Germanic kingdoms. In this context, Egdisius Avitus, a leader of the Roman resistance in Gallia, found shelter among the Burgundians. In 476, the last Western Emperor was deposed by Odoacer, who now ruled Italia. In Gallia, the borders of the successor kingdoms calcified. The Alamanni and the Franks controlled the upper and lower Rhine respectively. In the north still held the remnant Roman state. The Visigoths for their part had conquered the entire southwest, but also a strip of land which denied Burgundian access to the sea. 
in the early 480s, the Burgundians suspected the Bishop of Langres, Aproncullus, to plot with the Franks. Thus, they decided to have the man executed. Aproncullus managed to flee, however, and now in Clermont, he was chosen by Sidonius Apollinaris to be his successor. Sometimes during the 15 years preceding 490, Chilperic I had passed away. As the brother of Gondioc, he had ruled the kingdom since the latter's death. Chilperic II and Godomar were probably murdered by Gundubad. Thus, by now, only two sons of Gondioc were still alive. Godegizol controlled the north from Geneva, where he had to confront Alamanni incursions. Gundubad, for his part, ruled from Lyon in the south. Another important event was the conquest of northern Gallia by Clovis, king of the Franks. Gundubad took advantage of the war between Odoacer and Theodoric of the Ostrogoths to invade Italia. His raid allowed the capture of some 6,000 prisoners. The tribal elite which emerged after the resettlement in Sapodia clearly favored Arian over Nicene Christianity. Accordingly, Gundobad and his brother were Arians, but had taken Nicene wives. After the death of Shilperic II, his family and his daughter Clotilde went to live in the court of Godegizel. Clovis, king of the Franks, had heard of his Burgundian princess of Nicene confession and requested to marry her, which eventually happened. Once victorious in Italia, Theodoric of the Ostrogoths sent Epiphanius of Pavia to negotiate the release of the captives taken by Gundobad. As part of the deal, the king's son, Sigismund, married Theodoric's daughter, Ostrogotha. In the year 500, peaceful coexistence between the two brother kings ended. Godegizel sought help from Clovis. His offer was to take over the entire Burgundian kingdom in exchange for land and tribute. Clovis accepted and invaded. The three armies met near Dijon. Unaware of his brother's betrayal, Gundobad was taken by surprise. Defeated, he fled to Avignon, where he was besieged by Clovis. There, a certain Aridius convinced Clovis to take a tribute from Gundobad and leave. The threat of a Visigothic alliance also played a part. With Clovis dealt with, Gundobad rushed to Vienne. There, he killed his brother and massacred his partisans. Now he was the sole monarch of the Burgundian kingdom. Gundobad and Clovis met on their common border to bargain. Probably with territorial concessions by Gundobad, both kingdoms would become allies, changing the balance of power in Gallia. The Burgundians were a small elite, ruling over a vast Gallo-Roman population. The proper management of the kingdom required a clear legislation between and for both communities. Thus, under Gundobad was published the Lex Burgundionum. This text established a written law for the Burgundians themselves, but also their interactions with the locals. It was Germanic law with Roman influence covering, among other things, marriage, land property, slavery, and physical harm with monetary compensation. As laws of this time were personal and not territorial, a part of this code was focused on Roman affairs only. Still, ruling over a Nicene majority affected the elite. Bishop Avitus of Vienne, who became one of the most powerful clergymen in the realm, attempted to convert the Burgundians. He was partially successful as he led Sigismund and other nobles to the Roman faith and praised the baptism of the Frankish king Clovis. However, despite his efforts, he could not convert Gundobad. At about the same time, the monarch elevated his son Sigismund to the rank of king. Like his deceased uncle Godegizel, 
he established himself in Geneva. The ambitions of Clovis over Aquitania were easy to see. Soon, despite diplomatic efforts from Theodoric, the three powers of Gallia went to war. Sigismund took the lead of an army and crossed into enemy territory to link up with the Franks. At Vouillet, the Visigoths were crushed and Aric II slain by Clovis, opening the way for the conquest of Aquitania. Gundobad put pressure in the south, taking Narbonne and, with his allies, besieged Arles. The siege dragged on until an Ostrogothic army arrived and drove out the attackers. This intervention stopped Franco-Burgundian expansion and preserved a Gothic presence in Gallia. In 515, Sigismund, Nicene Christian for a decade, founded the monastery of Agon in the Alps, the place of martyrdom of the legendary Theban legion. Gundobad passed away the next year, making Sigismund the official king. He continued the formality of pledging allegiance to the emperor in Constantinople, minting coins in his name. His brother Godomar took his place in Geneva. With the kingdom of Clovis partitioned between his sons, a new generation of monarchs now ruled over Gallia. The first important event of Sigismund's reign was the Council of Epaon. Presided over by Avitus, it was attended by bishops from the entire kingdom. It discussed clerical lifestyle and relations with laymen. More specifically, it was also the first council to show direct hostility to the Jewish community, forbidding one to eat alongside Jews. The elite was still divided between Nicaeans and Arians and thus, Avitus was careful not to provoke the latter. During his reign, the king would also enrich the Lex Burgundionum of his father. Sigismund's first marriage with Ostrogotha had sired a son, Sigeric. As she had by now passed away, the king remarried. According to the writings of Gregory of Tours, the new queen and her stepson were at odds, hating each other. One day, Sigeric denounced the queen for wearing the clothes of his past mother. In turn, she fed lies to Sigismund, claiming that Sigeric plotted to kill and replace his father. Convinced and angered, the king had his son asphyxiated. Regretting his action immediately, he exiled himself to his monastery seeking forgiveness. He had lost noble support and feared retaliation by Theodoric. The Frankish kings looked at Burgundy with predation the last piece of territory to fully control Gallia. From their mother, Clotilde, a Burgundian princess, they were related to its ruling family. Clodomer, king of Orléans, was especially interested. Together, they entered the Burgundian territory victoriously. Sigismund had himself tonsured and fled again to the monastery he founded. The Franks caught up and took him prisoner. Clodomer ordered the killing of Sigismund and his family. Their bodies were thrown into a well. Forced by circumstance, Godomar became the new king and prepared for the next clash. Representing the Aryan counterbalance among the elite and building his legitimacy from his father instead of his brother, he enjoyed much support from the nobility. A second expedition penetrated in Burgundy, while an Ostrogothic army, perhaps as a Frankish ally, made gains in the south. The two main opponents met in a pitched battle east of Lyon. While the Franks exploited their advantage, the Burgundians managed to kill Clodomer, avenging Sigismund. The enemy withdrew, leaving the battlefield to Godomar. The Ostrogoths, for their part, had not engaged, but kept control of the occupied territory. Recent events, the downfall of Sigismund, the enemy invasions, 
the split between Frankish partisans and the Burgundian loyalists, and Alamanic raids, left the kingdom shaken. Godomar reorganized it, enacted new laws and ransomed prisoners. After the passing of Theodoric the Great, he was able to negotiate the restoration of his southernmost territories. Eight years later, the Franks returned. This time, the Burgundians were decisively defeated at Autun. Godomar fled and disappeared while the kingdom of the Burgundians fell. From the 3rd to the 6th century AD, the Burgundians proved themselves to be resilient. They migrated from the edge of Germania, they battled to maintain their presence on the Rhine, they suffered destruction from the Huns, they associated with the Romans in various ways and eventually established a successful kingdom which they defended for nearly a hundred years. After its conquest, Burgundy would maintain a degree of particularism inside the Frankish kingdom, while the Lex Burgundianum continued to be applied under the new elite. The Burgundians did not only contribute to the local identity of a region which took their name, but the realm of Burgundy would periodically reappear throughout the medieval period. <laughs>